Scientists recently measured the gravitational force from the lightest object to date. They did this by recreating an experiment that was first performed by Henry Cavendish more than 200 years ago. Of course, they made a couple of improvements on the original experiment, but the concept is the same. This is an extremely promising piece of research. We don't know how gravity works on small scales. This is because gravity is significantly weaker than the other fundamental forces, more than 30 orders of magnitude weaker, and thus has eluded detection on minute scales. By miniaturizing the Cavendish experiment, we have the possibility to begin to explore an entire new regime of gravity, potentially unlocking knowledge of how gravity works on this scale, and maybe even unifying our understanding of all the forces. But before we get into the latest results, let's discuss the original results, the so-called Cavendish experiment. The first thing that you should know about the Cavendish experiment is that it wasn't invented nor designed by Cavendish. It was designed and originally built by a relatively unknown scientist, John Mitchell. He has a rather large list of accomplishments beyond the invention of the torsion balance, which was also independently invented by Charles Augustin de Coulomb, which he used for measurements of charge rather than gravity. These accomplishments include being the first person to suggest that earthquakes travel as waves, as well as being the first person to propose the existence of black holes way back in the 18th century. Unfortunately, John Mitchell died before he could perform the measurements with his torsion balance and his equipment passed through several hands before finally finding a home with his contemporary Henry Cavendish. Now, unlike Mitchell, Cavendish is very well known for his accomplishments, both in chemistry and physics. On top of the Cavendish experiment, he's also known for discovering hydrogen, or inflammable air as he referred to it, as well as measuring the composition of air and many other well-known experiments. So, how did this experiment to measure the gravitational force between two masses work? To do this, scientists use a torsion balance, which consists of a bar that is suspended in the middle by a thin fibre. This fibre acts as a torsion spring, which is the same as a normal spring, but reacts to forces that cause the spring to twist rather than compress. By introducing a constant force to the torsion spring, the balance will eventually come to an equilibrium position where there is an equal force acting on the spring and torque from the spring itself. This is the crux for measuring the force of gravity between two objects. In its original form, Cavendish's experiment involved two very large lead balls weighing approximately 158 kilograms. These act to attract the two lighter lead balls of approximately 780 grams that were attached to the torsion balance. Building all of this in a large sealed building to prevent interference from outside influences, Cavendish watched through a telescope how the torsion balance slowly twisted towards the larger lead balls. From this measurement, he was able to deduce the density of the Earth, which can in turn be used to determine the g-factor from Newton's law of gravity. This latest measurement is much smaller than the original. Rather than lead, the scientists used gold for the masses, and all the masses are relatively equal, approximately 90 milligrams. And instead of a telescope used to manually read off the twist of the torsion balance, a laser is reflected off a mirror and onto a photodiode. Now you might think, great, we make everything smaller, we can just bring it all together and wait. Well, unfortunately, it's not that easy. Just like how Cavendish had to place his experiment in a sealed building to prevent outside influences, we likewise have to devise a strategy to minimize the effects of outside noise on the experiment. Now that the experiment is much smaller, it is way more sensitive to outside disturbances. Things like trams going past the building that the experiment is held in can be actually seen in the experiment itself. So scientists have to shield the experiment as much as possible, measure at night or during holidays when there are less people around 
and they also need to oscillate the experiment so they can remove this background noise. They achieve this oscillation by moving the test mass in and out at a given frequency. Thus, they can measure the noise spectrum and remove it from the actual signal of the attraction of gravity. The measurement looks something like this, where the blue line is before background subtraction and the orange line is after. And the actual signal that we're looking for is this small peak labeled F mod. As you can see, this is a non-trivial experiment and to go to even smaller masses will be difficult, but a worthwhile challenge. Now the measurements that they took measured a G factor that was consistent with previous values. So they were unable to measure a deviation from larger masses at this size. But we may find at some scale that gravity no longer behaves the same and thus we should miniaturize the experiment further. Furthermore, we may be able to start to probe if there is a deviation from the inverse square law of gravity at smaller scales. Currently, the best reported scale is on the order of 50 micron, but maybe on the nanometer scale, the inverse square law no longer holds. We don't know. Exploring this regime may also help to shed light on fundamental features of string theory and dark energy. Overall, interesting and worthwhile research. Thanks for watching. Have fun. See you next time.